All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house. It is with a heavy heart that we want to give our condolences to the Lewis family. Representative John Lewis passed away on today, on yesterday. Um, well, yes, after 12, so, yeah, on yesterday. He was an American politician and a civil, and a civil rights leader. He was the U.S. representative of Georgia's 5th Congressional District from 1987 until his death in 2020. He was the dean of Georgia's congressional delegation, and the, the, the district he served included uh, northern three-fourths of Atlanta. He was a member also of the Democratic Party, as uh, y'all didn't know. You know, when he was younger, he was also the chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, which they call SNCC. And he was one of the big six leaders of groups who organized the 1963 March on Washington. And he played many key roles in the civil rights movement and its actions to end legalized racial segregation in the United States. Now look at there. What was that? 1963? Now, somebody said the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again the same way and expect a different result. Well, this was 1963. Yeah, we got to use some different tactics. Anyway, Lewis received many honorary degrees and awards from intimate, intimate national and international institutions, including the highest civilian honor of the United States, the Presidential Medal Honor of Freedom. Oh, he was so proud. I remember that day. On December 29, 1919, it was announced that Lewis was receiving treatment for stage 4 pancreatic cancer. Lewis died on July 17, 2020. May he rest in power. He fought the good fight. Well done. I can hear God say my good and faithful servant. You fought a good fight. So, rest in power, um, John Lewis. And another thing that caught my eye that I wanted to just uh, check on for a minute was that, um, and I want to say congratulations, so let's just put a balance on this thing. Netflix loses Move to ask Monique's sex and racial discrimination suit over comedy special pay. So uh, the judge didn't throw it out. He said, man, I think I want to hear this. <laughs> uh, subscribers um, and revenue may be up for Netflix, but a federal judge has denied the streamer's second motion to throw out Monique's racial and gender bias lawsuit against the now Ted Sarandis co-owned CEO company. The comic and precious Oscar winner, whose real name is Monique Hicks, says the 500000 she was first offered by Netflix in 2017 for a stand-up special was not just an insult, but illegal. Her gender and racial discrimination filing last November over pay for potential comedy special cites tens of millions reportedly paid to the likes of Amy Schumer, Ricky Gervais, Ellen DeGeneres, and Dave Chappelle for their Netflix special. The 2019 suit also alleges that Netflix 
treatment of Monique began with a discriminatory lowball offer and ended with a blacklisting act of retaliation. In rejecting the streamer's motion to dismiss, Judge Andre Barodi said yesterday, Monique plausibly agrees that after she spoke out and called her initial offer discriminatory, Netflix retaliated against her by shutting down its standard practice of negotiating in good faith that typically results in increased monetary compensation beyond the opening offer and denying her increased compensation as a result. That was part of the, 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 of the ruling. <laughs> wow. While Netflix argues that the novelty of Monique's claim and the absence of on-point legal authority for it should bar her retaliation claims outright. But the court disagrees. The U.S. District a Court judge added, um, no, 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 should not. Last month, lawyers for both sides argued the motion in a COVID-19 induced telephone hearing before Judge Bergotti. Um, Berot, I'm sorry. After further details below of this case that clearly isn't going away for Netflix unless they settle. Netflix courted Monique, saw she had to offer, saw what she had to offer, and made her an offer. Lawyers for the Oscar winner declared Thursday in a multi claim complaint filed in LA Superior Court. But the Offer Netflix made Monique wrecked of discrimination and it perpetuated the pay gas suffered by black women. Well, the judge said, we're going to hear it. That's, that, that sounds okay to me. Um, at the heart of the claim, in uh, the jury... <coughs> At the heart of the claim, well, I guess it's a 10-point claim. It's a 10-claim and jury-seeking document is Monique's contention that the $500,000 the Red Hastings run streamer offered her back in 2017 for a special was not just an insult, it was illegal. Netflix business practice of paying black women less than non-black women for substantially equal or similar work causes harm to plaintiff that outweighs any reason Netflix may have for doing so. The jury seeking complaint states. Monique objected to Netflix discriminatory pay offer pointed out how it was discriminatory and asked Netflix to do the right thing by negotiating pair fair pay with fair play. Uh, um, that's what the 39-page filing is seeking. That's what it says. In, in response, Netflix, Netflix did just the opposite. It dug its heels in the ground, refused to negotiate fairly, and stood behind its discriminatory offer. And they claim Monique, I mean, claim Monique's attorneys um, at the D. Roberta's law firm. In stark contrast, when a white female comedian objected to her offer, given how much lower it was comparable to the males, Netflix reconsidered and up her offer. They add in what is a pretty clear reference to Amy Schumer. In short, this, as a lawsuit shows, Netflix treatment of Monique began with a discriminatory lowball offer and ended with a blacklisting act of retaliation. As is to further point the proof, the filing list off the tens of millions, the likes of returning Golden Globes Ricky Gervais, Ellen DeGeneres and Dave Chappelle supposedly raked in for their Netflix specials. 
This lawsuit seeks to correct these wrongs, bring fair and non-discriminatory pay, discriminatory pay to Monique and stop Netflix discriminatory practices going forward. The action says, with names named and photos included, a complete lack of racial diversity management team, the complete lack of racial diversity management team of Hastings Sarandos and Jessica McNeil and more in the lawsuit, Netflix wasn't given any ground in their response to the long-term critic. We deeply care about inclusion, equality, and diversity and take any accusations of discrimination very seriously, a spokesperson said for the streamer on Thursday. We believe our opening offer to Monique was fair, which is why we will be fighting this lawsuit. Ebony nominate late night host and queen of comedy headliner Monique, on the other hand, took to social media to give her point of view. Hi, my loves. <laughs> I can confirm that today I filed a pay discrimination lawsuit against Netflix. I had a choice to make. I could accept what I felt was pay discrimination or I could stand up for those who became before me and those who will come after me, I chose to stand up. I don't have to. I don't have any further comment at this time. But I appreciate all of your love and your support. Well, right on, Sister Monique. Right on, girl. I'm glad. I am so glad you want to get your just due. So, but you know what I think. I think they're just going to settle with you, honey, just to get it over with. Just to get it on over with. So you'll get your coins one way or the other. I'll write that. I just wanted to make sure I uh, closed in on those two um, uh, uh, breaking news stories, actually. Rest in power, my brother John Lewis. My condolences to your family. And um, the making of <laughs> that is thwarted. Yeah. So Monique is gonna be getting paid. Y'all ain't y'all that that was thwarted. You just couldn't just throw her away as if she didn't have a valid point. Congratulations, Monique. 